Hey guys, Captain Matt. Welcome to another edition of Marathon Sport Fishing Tales from the Cleaning Station. Today's episode, it's a wild one. I'm gonna go over a little protocol. We are trolling some planers. We're hunting for the who's. So in my boat, when, we're, when you're trolling for Wahoo, the rod is in this rod holder on the Falcon here. The rod holder has a back backing plate on it. If you're trolling planers, I highly recommend that. As we're trolling, the rod, the rod's in the rod holder. When we hook a fish, whoever's on the rod, the rod stays in the rod holder. The boat gets put on heading hold, we keep it in gear, we keep going. We might back it down a little bit, but not a lot until we get the planer off. So whoever's on the rod is cranking in the fish, the planer's up on top, the planer's on a bridle system, the planer hooks into the bridle. Whoever's on the rod continues to reel in the rod holder until the fish is coming up the back of the boat. At that point in time, whoever's on the rod, you gotta watch the fish, you might swing the tip out a little bit, and as the fish gets closer, you're gonna swing the tip back in so I can reach the fish with a gap. So the tip will be in approximately this position. At that point, the captain can reach the fish with the gaff, flip him into the boat. What we have happening in this video is 100% backwards, opposite of what's going on. I'm almost embarrassed to show it. Almost. Nathan's on the rod. Nate's on the rod. For some reason, he's got the rod straight out. I can't reach the fish. Things go really, really wrong on this one. So next time Nate comes down, I have a new piece of equipment for the Falcon. We have the Nate Larson calf. He can hold it straight out as far as he wants now, and I can still reach the fish at 12 feet. So new piece of equipment on the Falcon. So stay tuned, grab your life jackets and hang on, and welcome aboard. Two seconds after putting putting the spoon on, get him, Nate, get him. At two seconds after putting the spoon on, we just yeah. changed the bait up. Is he on there? Yeah. All right, Nate, Nate's on him, Nate's on him. I told you, but you got it. I just marked another big school. You can click the clicker off on the left side right if you really want to. Yeah, I do. Watch your left foot, I got to pull the gap out. All right, we are on, guys. We are hooked up. Yeah, he's probably coming up to the top. Let's clean it. Get out of the way! 
<laughs> it worked! <laughs> Complete the shit show! Don't break my eye! <laughs> what did you do there? When I was going around you the hit Yeah! When I was trying to go around the <laughs> Rookie! <laughs> well... Alright! Holy shit! Right. Holy shit! All right, I'll fix that. I can't believe we got the fish. I thought it unhooked, but I didn't realize it pumped the brake. Oh, I'm hurt. All right, Nate, Nate's here. That's decided. A or mistake, right? Yeah, here we go. This is what happens. This is what happens when you bump your when drag. you bump your drag and you got a fish to the yeah. Boat. So the gaff job was stellar. We literally just changed the bait out to the spoon, you guys. I was like. We're going over too many fish. We're not getting nothing. And so we just changed out the spoon. Nate tried to let the fish go. We're gonna have a little, we're gonna have a little captain's talk as soon as the camera gets turned on. Who's in the boat, baby? Who's, Who's in, in the, the boat? boat? Yes. Who's awesome. in the boat? Yeah, I definitely didn't make that one look easy. I'll, I'll do better next time. <laughs> Fucking shit. I told you my boat's all you wanna you wanna angle it down like that, turn him out. Boat's a shit show. Always a shit show well, on my boat. It just happened. It seemed like it was gonna come in so nice. I think it's the people I, I fish for. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the people I fish for. <laughs> I'm gonna use my camera. Yeah, yours is probably better. Did it work? Okay, for fish photos, I always turn the boat where the sun is gonna be shining directly on the fish. And you'd like to try to get a photo right away when when they still have all their color with certain species. You see it, Nate. Yeah, that's how it's done. That's how it's done. <laughs> Nate's actually wahoo fish before and caught some if you guys can believe it. <laughs> I'm gonna check the photos. I think there was a little altercation in the photo booth prior to the photos being issued to the rest of the community. That's my guess. <laughs> right, Nate? Right. <laughs> Going by Mr. Turtle, he's just hanging here. Hey buddy, we go logger him. Look at him. Wow. Whoop. There we go. That's a cool. That's a nice Pretty neat. He is big. You need to pay attention when you're offshore, guys. We were heading right toward him. He couldn't even hear us. You can run into one of them real easy. It's hard on the boat and hard on the turtle. Okay, guys, here we go. Wahoo cleaning time. Again, they're pretty much similar to the Amahi. I cut them in front of the tail here, and I'm gonna zip him up the back, same as the Mahi. So this is about a 14, a little over 14 pound Wahoo. Okay, unzipping the fish here. Like I said, their structure is very similar to like a Mahi, but these guys got a retractable top fin like a tuna. Now the fins on on that top fin are really sharp. You gotta be careful going when you're running the knife down the back. You don't want to get one of those jabbed into your hand. They got kind of a itchy bacteria or something that you'll get in there. When I'm cleaning a Wahoo, I'm just taking my time here, working the fish. It's an absolute amazing eating fish. So I want to not screw up on the meat or anything. You can see me peel that side of that fillet off, how clean the carcass looked there on that side of the fish. I didn't waste any meat on that. I always keep my fillet table really clean just zipping off some of the rib bones here a couple left in the fish again i'm taking my time at this i've got it running on high speed so i'm going to spin the fish around here and i like to take the wahoo and split them right down the middle where the bloodline is and you've got a top and a bottom loin on the fish so i put one of them in the cooler and I'll grab one of the loins here, then I'm gonna flay that skin off from there. It just goes a lot easier when you're cleaning a Wahoo. Okay, next I'm flaying the bloodline out of the fish. I've taken the knife and I've angled it at a 45 degree. Once you look at the side of the fish, you'll see how, how to angle it to get the bloodline out. Next, I'm taking the skin off of the fish right here. I start it with a sharp knife and I'm using my dull kitchen knife on it to get the skin off of the fish. You've seen me use that in every other video with mahi and tuna. 
Anything with a thin skin, I prefer that knife. And if you notice on the skin of the fish here, I left about an eighth inch on. So here you have it. It's absolutely gorgeous meat. It's got a unique hue to it. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm gonna to do a little sesame seared wahoo with a little pineapple, like a charred pineapple curry chutney with a little coconut rice. First thing, we're gonna we're gonna take the wahoo, we're gonna roll it in. I've got a mix here. It's black and white sesame seeds, a little kosher salt, a little pepper. Pretty simple. About a tablespoon and a half of each. I've got my wahoo in the bag. The wahoo that almost wasn't. Some of my buddies on the boat like to make me work a little harder with the gaff. I'm not gonna mention any names, Nathan, but just gonna say. Wahoo, I got three pieces here. I'm gonna just take and roll it up. You can see the meat looks absolutely excellent. It's a couple days old here. I just want to get her in the sesame seeds. Roll this over, you guys get a little better view. I'm just going to do a light press on this. I'll show you one of them, then I'll get the other two kicking. So as you do a little bit of a roll in your sesame seeds, I'm going to add a little on top to boot. Plate's a little smaller than it should be for the application, but you want to get your wahoo or your fish or searing tuna typically with sesame seeds. Roll in the sesame seeds, put it back in the fridge. The protein in the fish will bind the sesame seeds to the fish, but you want to give it at least a half an hour to an hour. You can see I do have my mandatory cocktail today, a little Papa's Pilar and some Coke. I've got the wahoo. It's been sitting about, I'd say about an hour or so, but you can tell those sesame seeds are starting to stick on the fish now. Like I said, you got to plan this a little bit ahead of time, but they're sticking on the fish. Well, that's ready to go. That's going to get seared in the large pan back here. For the chutney, I was being a little lazy today. I wasn't being lazy. I was working on the boat. I was boating. I call that boating when the days we're not fishing and I'm working on the boat. So I got some crushed pineapple, some corn. The recipe I've got calls for that being charred. It's gonna get charred right behind me here on the induction stove. What I'm making today, I'm using, I'm making a little coconut rice. For coconut rice, you're gonna to wanna to use this. Instead of regular water, use coconut water. Do not use like the coconut, the thick stuff in a can. This is coconut water, there's a difference. Your rice won't turn out if you use the other stuff. So coconut water will give you coconut flavored rice. So as I'm getting ready here to make the chutney, just some of the ingredients, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the recipe, you know, I'll, I'll take a link to the recipe down below because there's a lot, of, a lot of moving parts in this one. It's my first time doing it. We got a little red pepper flakes, kosher salt, soy sauce. This one was new. A little Fisher and Weezer char, it's charred pineapple bourbon sauce. I don't know if you can go wrong with that. I don't think you can. A little pepper. Again, the little pepper grinders, guys, they come on the side of the grinder. You can see you can turn the gray part on the top here. This'll this will turn. So right now I got it on a large grind, and you can flip it to medium to small. We're gonna add a little honey. We have one each mango, which I just had to go get because I didn't have one. A little red pepper action, a couple, a couple of jalapenos, half of a red onion. This is pickled ginger, but I'm gonna dice that up. Kind of caramelize the onions quick. Honestly, I threw them in with the rest of the stuff first. And I'm um, like, shit, I need to caramelize them. So then I was looking at the recipe, it calls for a whole bottle of the uh, charred pineapple bourbon sauce. If I'm gonna simmer this down here, probably, you know, eight, 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna throw her in the fridge and let her cool off and let all the flavors meld together. But, I'm thinking, yeah, a little more of the bourbon sauce is not going to be a bad thing. It does call for the whole bottle. I'm going all in, so. Oops. My fat's touching the buttons on the stove, so. And we are empty. It's got an absolutely amazing smell to it. We're going to cook this off. I'm going to put the link to the recipe below. This uh, it's just got to be... Rockstar. So the chutney's almost done 
cooking off. I got about, it looks like a minute or two left the way it's looking. I'm gonna take it, pull it out, let it rest a second. I'm gonna put it in the fridge and let it cool off. I got my sesame oil cooking. It's smoking a little bit here, so I have a little extra of the chutney left over. Let me give you guys a little taste test. That's the Wahoo's cooking. All right, here we go. Can you smell that? Man, that is amazing. Holy crap, you could put that on a flip-flop and eat it. I'm not even kidding. And that's not the stuff I got cooled off in the freezer, so. That's amazing, that is absolutely amazing. So my Wahoo's cooking here. We got a little sear action. I'm trying to figure which way to flip it. I'm probably gonna go, we're going fork. Let me give you guys a quick look. So here's the deal. After about an hour, those sesame seeds stick into the fish. All right, guys, so here we go. Just pulling a chunk of the seared Wahoo off. I'm gonna go from the heavier to... The Wahoo is absolutely amazing. The Wahoo itself is, to me, a better sushi grade fish than a tuna. It's, it's actually my my favorite eating fish. Without the chutney on, was amazing. Seared, you can cook it till it's done all the way. So there we go guys, doesn't that look amazing? The smell is, is absolutely intense with what we've got going on. Thanks for tuning in today guys. Please smash that subscribe button and hit the like button. And shoot me a comment if you like this kind of cooking or if you like the kind of wahoo fishing we're doing. Let me know. And I actually check them every single day. Hey guys, Captain Matt here. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. Don't forget, smash the subscribe button and hit the like button.